gentlemen, here she is. Not Nicole Kidman. Here's Kathy Griffin. Seacrest, and here's why. I love you. Okay, here's the deal. First of all, I love the idol, don't get me wrong. I don't get him. He can't sing, he can't dance, he has no talent. When is he gonna go away? But the thing that kills me about him is that he thinks he's funny, and that's really annoying to me. Like when he tries to out Simon Simon, which you can't do. Because Simon is the best, right? And he's so quick and he's funny and then Seacrest thinks he's funny. Ugh. Okay. So anyway, I get asked to present at the American Music Awards. And I'm thrilled because I love all things award shows. I like watching them with my gaze. I like attending them. I, I like judging everybody on them. I love award shows. So then they tell me that I'm presenting with Seacrest. So I was like, oh, shit. I know. I know. Buzzkill, buzzkill. Okay, so I'm doing the red carpet and I'm really trying to look good, okay? So I've got this rented Badgley Mishka top that was $4,000, trying to get off the worst dress list. And um, I tried, I tried. I got, I got my fake hair in. In fact, it was, it's this fake hair. Okay, so same hair. Okay, so anyway. I go and I'm doing the red carpet and I see Dick Clark is standing there and he's kind of monitoring the red carpet, right? He's looking at everybody and he's got like an assistant or a doyen or something and the assistant is telling him who everybody is. So all these big stars are there and then I walk by and I bust the assistant saying, oh, that's uh, Kathy Griffin, she's a comedian. And then I see Dick Clark just go like this. <laughs> so. I thought that was funny, so I turned to him, and he was this close to me, and I turned to him, and I go, Dick, I saw you just shake your head. I just busted you. <laughs> Dick. And he had no reaction to that, and then I was like, okay. It was so weird. I just kept walking. Okay, so this other thing he does that's really funny is during the American Music Awards, it's a big, giant show, right? ABC, primetime, big stars. During the commercial breaks, he yells at the artists. And it's the funniest thing because, you know, it's a live show, so they want everyone to be sitting and looking perfect and stuff. So during the commercial breaks, you're sitting there, and Dick Clark is like a crazy person going like this. Ashanti, sit down. <laughs> come, get, DMX, I mean it, come on. Brittany, I'm not going to tell you twice. It's the funniest thing because the big giant, no matter who they are, they're always like, oh, all right. All right, so... So anyway, that was fun. So I get there and I'm in my seat and it's ready for me to go do my presentation with Seacrest. So I go backstage and I see him and I gotta tell you, right off the bat, he looks a little odd, right? Cause he's, I'm not saying he's gay. I'm, and by the way, we'll get to Clay again in a minute. The thing that's really weird about Seacrest is he's super into grooming, right? Like he gets um, mani pedis, he gets his eyelashes dyed, he goes to Mystic Tan, he flat irons his hair. Very butch, very typical of straight men. Oh yeah, stuff all straight guys do. So anyway, I see him backstage, and for some reason he looks really jacked up. He's kind of sweaty, and he's very kind of diminutive, because you know people on TV are small, right? So he's got like this really couture velvet tux on with like a leopard collar, it looked kind of weird. So I, there's all these big stars walking around, so I go up to him and I said, 
Ryan, um, you know, I'm, we're going to present together, and I just want to tell you, I hope we're really respectful of each other because, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. When you're talking on stage, I'll totally shut up, and I ask the same of you. So how about smooth sailing? All right, Seacrest, we good? So he looks at me, and he goes like this. Why, you going to f*** me? I go, what? He goes, you going to f*** me? I go, no, there's no f***ing. What are you talking about? So... What he meant was, are you gonna like make a joke at my expense, right? So then I said, Ryan, I go, I promise I am so not gunning for you tonight. I have one joke, it's really stupid, it has nothing to do with you. In fact, I walked him over to the script and I showed him. I said, look, here's what you know, like on award shows, they have like that stupid patter. I said, here's what it is, it has nothing to do with you. He turns to the stage manager and he goes, I know this girl's gonna f me. I said, enough with the f***ing. So, now I'm getting really nervous, right? Because this is my biggest fear is that he's going to freak out. So then I see him pacing. He's walking around pacing like this. I can tell he's thinking of some way to get me, right? So he goes up to uh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, right? Who's all old and rickety with the cane, right? So not old, but I'm just saying he's rickety. You could tip him like a cow. It's pretty easy. So, but he's very, you know, he's a wonderful and an icon and all that stuff. So then... He goes up to Ozzy, and he goes, hey, Ozzy, how about this? How about if uh, when Kathy and I go out, we bring you out on stage with us, and we ask the audience what they think of you, and then they all cheer. How about that, huh? <laughs> so I go, Ryan, we're not supposed to do that. The show is running long. We're going to get in trouble. He goes, no, no, no. Stage manager told me to. So the stage manager overhears it, and she goes, Ryan, I did not say that. Don't do that. We're running long. <laughs> I know. So Seacrest just goes, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And then Ozzy, in the meantime, goes like this, I just want to go home. <laughs> His back was hurting, you know, he was in no mood. So, can't make Ozzy do anything he doesn't want to do. Okay, so anyway, then Sharon Osbourne comes up to me, and I'm a huge fan of hers, and she comes up to me and she goes, oh, I just wanted to meet you, you're so funny, and my husband and I love watching you on TV. And I was all excited, oh, thank you, I'm a big fan, you know, shake her hand. And then she says nothing to Seacrest, right? I know. <laughs> which made me nervous, you know? So then Seacrest puts his hand out and he goes, Ryan Seacrest, host of American Idol. And she's just like, hello, and walks away. And I was like, ooh. I mean, I loved it, but it made me nervous. So, so anyway, I can tell he's like trying to think of something, trying to think of something. So then he becomes obsessed with who's gonna walk out first and who's gonna actually hold the award. Right? So I said, Ryan, you can walk out first. I really don't care. And he goes, well, you're doing everything. I was like, okay, I will follow you, no problem. And then they said, okay, Kathy, bring out the award. And he kind of had a big fit. So I said, Ryan, hold the award. I don't care. Stick it up your f***ing ass. I don't care. He's <laughs> being such a weirdo. So, okay. So sure enough, it's time for us to go out, right? And it's a live show. So the music starts and Seacrest walks out to totally the wrong place. And I follow him. So it's like this. <laughs> All right, so. So we finally go to the right place, and I swear to God, and if you saw this, you know it's true. The first thing out of his mouth is, that's what I get for following a woman. I know, he's a d he's a d All right, so. <laughs> all right, so I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, roll with it. And so then it's time for us to give out the award. And the award we were giving out was the most popular artist on the internet, the person who got the most internet votes, right? So it's time for me to do my, like, really silly, stupid award show joke. So I said, Ryan, um, before we announce the award, uh, I've got some of the emails that the people have sent in about this artist. Dear Kathy, please take your top off. <laughs> That's not it. You know, like a dumb joke, right? <laughs> I know, it's stupid. But anyway, so then, so I do my dumb joke to like a total like modest response. And then Seacrest just loses his shit, right? So next thing you know, he literally goes like this. Yeah! Like that. Walks behind me. If you saw this, you know this is true. Walks behind me, rips my top open for real. Live TV. Prime time, ABC, I'm standing there in my bra, right? 
like that. And I'm fuming because I'm like, and I could tell the audience was, the, the response was kind of weird. Like some people thought it was planned and some people didn't. And I'm really humiliated. And I'm kind of trying not to cry and I get really sweaty and I'm just like, it. and you know, it's live. So I can't, you know, like say cut, you know, or anything. It's just live. Because <laughs> I know Dick Clark would be like, Kathy, keep going. So, so anyway, I'm scared of him. So he rips open the top, and I'm, and of course it's a my Badger Mishka rented $4,000 top, right? So I'm standing there, and I'm just like trying not to cry, and I kind of close it. So I just looked at the audience. I said, you'll have to excuse my friend Ryan. That's the first time he's ever touched a woman. And you for having that response. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, now it's time to give out the award and we give the award out to Nellie with the band-aid, right? All right, so, so we're like, and the winner is Nellie. So I'm all like thrown and I kind of moved to the side and Nellie comes up with the band-aid, never met him. He comes up and before he goes to the podium, he comes up to me and he goes, are you okay, girl? <laughs> Who knew? Nellie is a nurture caretaker. <laughs> Sweet. Very sweet. All right, so Nellie's posse is called the Saint Lunatics, right? So there's this one guy in the Saint Lunatics who dresses as Hannibal Lecter, and he's got the mask, right, and the three prongs. Okay, so he comes up, and he comes up to me before going to the podium. He's like, how you holding up, girl? <laughs> you are a saint. Um, so they were really sweet. Okay, so I walk backstage, and I'm like furious, right? And Seacrest just looks at me, and he goes, uh, if I uh, ripped it, I'll uh, pay for it, and he leaves. I know, and I was furious, so then Sharon Osbourne comes up to me, and she goes, I can't believe he did that. I would have kicked him in the balls. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're not a woman, if you're not a gay man, if you never watched daytime television, all the crazy <laughs> is going down on Oprah, all right? Speaking of award shows, I have to tell you something. I ran into Anna Nicole Smith. Yes, okay. Yes, I know. Get this. So I see her in an award show, and in my last Bravo special, I said some things about her that perhaps could be misconstrued as slightly negative in some way. I just implied that Trim Spa is now about 80% heroin. If you look at the jar, it's about 80 to 90% heroin. Um, all right, I'm fascinated with her, I love her. I, I'm at this award show, I'm backstage, and of course I wanted to follow her around because what's more fun than just following around Anna Nicole Smith all day, right? So I'm back there with my husband and we're like chasing her around and she always has a camera crew with her. So I'm kind of staying just out of her line of vision because I don't want her to see me. Like, I don't know if she's pissed at me. I never know who's pissed at me and who likes me and who wants to confront me, but... I can tell you that once you've had Whitney do this shit, um, you know, you watch your back. You watch your back. Okay, so she's all crazy, and I saw her at this award show, and she was actually hanging out with Brigitte Nielsen and Flava Flav, and it was just, I know, it was nuts. But she looked great, right? She looks gorgeous. Okay, so anyway, it's the end of the night and she's just leaving and I've been kind of following her around and watching and it's just been, she's been super crazy and stuff. And sure enough, just as she's turning to leave, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and she freaking catches my eye and I was like, oh shit, deer in the headlights, right? Because here's my thing with celebrities. When I'm busted, I'm busted. If someone says, you know, I hear you said that I was a fat cow drug addict. I'm like, I probably did. <laughs> Did you say I was gay? I thought you were. You know, like, I just, when I'm busted, I'm busted. Okay. Cause you know, Anna could be like fun and sweet, but you know, sometimes on that show, she got a little freaky and confrontational. You never know when she's like, you better, I just, yeah. You know, like you never know. <laughs> so I'm standing there and she catches my eye and I just went, hi. So here's what she did. Okay, you guys are me, I'm Anna Nicole Smith. Either 
either she didn't know or she wasn't sure who I was or she had just taken some shrimps. <laughs> all right. I love all kinds of show business craziness. And let me tell you where all the crazy is happening. Okay, hear me out. It doesn't matter if you're not a woman, if you're not a gay man, if you never watched daytime television, all the crazy shit is going down on Oprah. All right? Oh, yeah. Our fun little harmless Oprah show has gone a cuckoo. All right. First of all, she's very thin now. She's very cranky and very hungry. Right? So there's a couple favorites that I have. Did anybody happen to see Oprah back in time? This, okay, here. It was so nuts that that's the one that they should rerun every single day on a loop. All right, first of all, Oprah decides to participate in this ridiculous PBS show where people of their own volition decide to go live in like a fake village, like it's the year 1623 as part of an experiment for like two months, right? Which by the way, 1623, great year for women. Yeah. <laughs> and hygiene, good year for hygiene. All right. So anyway, they have like the fakey village and everyone's in the old timey clothes and stuff and it just looked stupid and retarded. And so of course, Oprah decides to go. So, <laughs> and they shot this episode of Oprah kind of like a reality show, it was great. Oh, and Oprah decides to go with her friend, Gail. <laughs> They start the show by interviewing separately Oprah and Gail, right? So they're interviewing Oprah and she's very serious, right? She's very self-righteous and she's saying, you know, I think that this is going to be a wonderful learning experience and I think that this is the type of thing that I'm happy and lucky to participate in and I'm glad that public television is doing a show, blah, 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 right? So then they go to Gail and Gail's really fun and she's going, I don't know what I'm going to do in this village. I'm a room service girl. I like to go to the plaza and have room service and we're laughing. Oh, Gail, we love you. Then. <laughs> Then they go back to Oprah again, and it was so funny. Oprah starts to get really paranoid for no reason. So she's going, hmm, 1623. Hmm, to be a black woman in 1623. And then she goes like this. I ain't gonna be no slave. Because don't you love when Oprah goes from normal Oprah to ghetto Oprah in one second? <laughs> We don't slay. So, although you know who is the queen of that is Tyra Banks from America's Next Top Model. Oh yeah, she is the queen. In fact, within one elimination ceremony, she will go from black to white, and and back to black again. Okay, so anyway, yeah, Tyra is like this. Robin, you have excellent bone structure, but girl, you got to use the gadunk gadunk. So anyway, Oprah starts getting really paranoid and she keeps saying, I'm gonna be no slave. And the thing I thought was so hilarious about that is as if, as if the producers of the Oprah show are like, you know, to be funny. Yeah. We should do a show where Oprah's a slave. Like, Oprah. All right, so then they go to the village and then the whole time Oprah's being all, I'm gonna be no slave, I'm gonna be no slave. Uh, okay, okay. And then sure enough, the villagers start to walk out of their little houses. Big deal, right? 1623, new person doesn't walk in every day. And they're kind of looking. And what's the first thing those white ladies in the village did? Oprah! First of all, you've got the two titans, right? You've got Oprah. Streisand. Both strong black women. Oh, okay. Did anybody happen to see Streisand on Oprah? Okay. It was heaven. First of all, you've got the two titans, right? You've got Oprah, Streisand. Both strong black women. It was, 
And they were like at each other the whole time, but sort of in that way, like where they had a smile on their faces. It was like a Mexican cockfight. <laughs> all right. So first of all, the first thing I notice is that Oprah's on the wrong side of the stage. Right? Normally, Oprah is on the right, right? And the guest is on the left. Oh, no. This time, Oprah's on the left and Streisand is on the right. Now, I don't know if you know this, but whenever Streisand does a talk show, she makes them change the set around to her good side. And as much as I love Barbara Streisand, I love her. I had the Color Me Barbara album when I was a kid. I love the specials. I'm a huge super fan. But it's sort of funny to me that Barbara Streisand thinks she has a good side. All right, so anyway. But I'm just saying. We're moving the set. Amazing talent. Okay. So anyway, they're sitting there, and then I noticed that Barbara is in all ivory, right? Okay. As much as I love her, it was unbelievable to me how interminably boring she was. She was going on and on saying the craziest shit. First of all, she was doing this whole thing about how she now has her colors, and she can only have these colors, and she doesn't want these colors. And her color of the moment was ivory. So she had her good friend Donna Karen make her an ivory skirt and a matching ivory sweater, and she's got the ivory shoes, and everything's got to be ivory. Okay, so Oprah can't resist with her, right? So then... Oh, so great. So then Oprah turns the, to the, and, and Streisand says, you know, and I like powder blue and I don't like the color orange. So Oprah turns to the audience and she goes, ooh, girl, I'm glad I didn't wear orange today. <laughs> and then Streisand goes, yeah, I'm glad you didn't too. <laughs> oh, it's so great. So then, then Oprah decides to surprise Streisand, which you can tell Streisand hates surprises. And so does Oprah. That's what was great about it. And so they go to this field piece, and she's like, well, we have a surprise today for Barbara Streisand. We tracked down her number one fan. OK, so then they go. And you know how she says that? John Travolta! Like that crazy. Like, what is she, at a football field somewhere? <laughs> OK, so anyway, she said they tracked down the one fan. So they fought, and Streisand, you can tell, didn't know about this. And she's like, uh, not in control, not in control. And so, <laughs> so they go, and they track down her number one fan. And it's a woman with cancer, right? So they track her down in like a nail salon or something. And she's sitting there, and she's got the wig on and the jogging suit. Because you know people with cancer, they love to wear jogging suits. Anyway, so, right? OK, so she's in the jogging suit. And then they go in, the Oprah crew goes in, and they're like, you know, we're from the Oprah show, and we're going to make your wildest dream come true. You're going to come see Barbara Streisand. And the woman is crying, and I'm crying, and the woman's jumping up and down. It's great. It's fantastic. So then they cut back to the Oprah show, and Oprah's kind of going like this, and Streisand's like this. <laughs> like that. OK, so then the woman's in the front row. So they cut to the woman front row. Everybody's crying. Everybody loves her. She's waving. It's her dream come true. So then Oprah can't resist, right? Come on up here and get yourself a hug from Barbara Streisand! So she runs up. And Streisand kind of begrudgingly gets off her chair, because it's not a good side. And then the woman gives her this big bear hug, right? And Streisand's kind of hugging her like this, like she might catch cancer. And then. <laughs> And the woman pulls away, and as the woman pulls away and takes her seat, you can see that the woman had accidentally, when she was hugging Barbara, gotten a little lipstick on her, her ivory Donic Karen's. Let me tell you, the rest of the show, Streisand could not take her eyes off. She'd be like, well, I started this album because I wanted to. Okay. It was right. Okay, so finally, it's the end of the show, and now Streisand is gonna sing. And that's what we're all in it for, right? Because she's cuckoo, but she's got the voice of a generation, and she's gonna sing live, and it's great. Okay, so she sits down, and she's gonna sing that song, Smile, from Modern Times, right? And it's beautiful, and it's pitch perfect, and she's Streisand. So she's singing it, right? And then there's slides behind her, remember this? Of her dead dog, right? <laughs> Yeah, because apparently this entire CD was inspired by her dead Lasso Opsa. <laughs> so she's singing the song, and it's lovely. And then there's a giant slide of, like, the dog on the couch, the dog at the bowl, the dog on his back. And I'm like, Jesus, Barbara, we, don't, we can't relate. OK, so then <laughs> she finishes the song. And I know she's all in ivory, and the microphone is ivory as well. Okay, so you know, 
Remember? Okay. So, <laughs> you saw it. You saw it. Okay, so I love those last moments of Oprah when she has a musical guest. I love when she dances in the audience because it's really bad and embarrassing. And she's just always like, she doesn't really know the lyrics and she's trying to lip sync. And you just, right? You're like, it's uncomfortable. And Oprah, you're embarrassing me. So, so anyway, she's doing that. And sure enough, Streisand finishes the song, and of course it sounds flawless, right? And I love her, and I'm loving it. There's about five seconds left of the show, right? So sure enough, Oprah can't resist. She's like, the great Barbara Streisand! And then she goes, she's like, girl, I gotta ask you, where in Chicago did you ever get a white microphone? Four seconds left of the show, and Streisand goes, I had them paint one of yours. Boom, show ends. <laughs> A couple months later, I get asked to go on Oprah, right? So I get a call, oh, you know, you, do you want to talk about your plastic surgery again? I said, no, 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 I'm so sick about talking about that. Well, it's for Oprah, what time? Okay, so <laughs> I go to Chicago and I was all excited to just be there. I was excited to be in the Harpo building and I just wanted to see what she was like, right? So I go and I do my segment and I try to get a picture with her beforehand and they're like, no. And so I go, <laughs> And I do my segment, and I gotta tell you, she was very, very nice, but she does have this way of always kind of letting you know who's dominant. She's very alpha dog, right? And while she was extremely friendly to me, there was a moment, there was this one moment where she actually left her chair and came over and just humped me like this. <laughs> She had that look on her face, like, you know, did you ever see a dog humping another dog and they have the nerve to be bored while they're doing it? <laughs> so I was like, Oprah, I know, you're the boss. So, it's weird. Okay, so anyway, I do my segment and I'm, I'm dying to get some kind of an impression of her, right? I'm thinking, I'm not leaving until I get some walk away with some kind of, I can think, like a window into Oprah. But everybody wants a piece of her. She's extremely guarded. I don't blame her, you know. So sure enough, it goes to commercial break. And the minute we go to commercial break, I turn to her and I go, I just got to tell you, that Streisand interview was off the hook. Without missing a beat. She goes, you know she painted my mic white. <laughs> So now I'm thinking, all right, it's getting time for me to present the award to Clay. I want to be funny, but like, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to call him gay. Like, even I'm not as much of an asshole, I'm going to be like, ladies and gentlemen, Clay Gakin. And so, it's time. I have a story about Clay Aiken to beat the band. First of all, I love Clay. I'm obsessed with him. I, I think he's a phenomenon, right? Because he's a great singer, he's a great guy. Um, I just think it's sort of comical that he does interviews about how he just can't find the right girl. Um, I'm not saying he's gay, I have no hidden proof. I am saying that um, the guys on Queer Eye are like that fag, so I... <laughs> I do find him to allegedly be the gayest man in the free world. Um, all right, I just, that just cracks me up. Okay, so here's my first, let me, let me backtrack. Okay, so the first time I met him was when he was still in the final 10, right? So get this, I'm gonna go on the Wayne Brady show, right? And they shared the same hallway with American Idol. So I'm excited about being on the Wayne show, but I'm kind of more excited about seeing the Idol kids, right? So I go to hair and makeup, and I've got like overalls, no makeup, my hair's in a ponytail. The elevator door's open, it's all 10 finalists. I can't handle it, I'm such a fan. So there's Clay and Ruben and Kimberly Caldwell and Kimberly Locke and the whole bunch, right? So I get in the elevator and I can't stop myself. I literally just go like this. <gasps> it's the American Idol kids. <gasps> oh my God. <gasps> okay, like, I just lost it basically. All right, all 10 of them go like this. Oh yeah, like I'm one of their fans, right? 
So I go and I'm sitting in the makeup chair, and then my friend is stage manager for Idol, and he sits next to me. And I said to him, I go, you know, I gotta tell you, um, I'm a little miffed. I said, I saw all the Idol kids in the elevator, and uh, not one of them recognized me. So he goes like this, oh no, they recognize you. <laughs> and they're pissed. I go, all 10 of them? <laughs> Even Carmen Rasmussen? <laughs> so, so anyway, then he said, and I'll never forget the way he said it because I thought it was so funny. He goes like this, do you say something in your comedy that Clay might be gay? I go, yeah. <laughs> I might imply in my comedy that there's a slight chance that Clay's a big fat homo. Yeah, duh. <laughs> so, okay, first of all, do you guys know that Clay fans are called Claymates? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, let me walk you through it. Okay, so. And they, they consider the place they live Clay Nation. I'm not kidding. So then that day, that day I don't meet Clay at all, right? A couple months later, I get a call from the Billboard Music Awards. They want me to present an award to Clay. I know. I go, does Clay know? And they're like, oh yeah, he's fine with it. And I was like, okay. So. I say to my husband, Matt, I go, look, they want me to give an award to Clay. I said, I'm probably going to get canned, but, you know, until he finds out, let's go. They do the Billboard Awards in Vegas. I said, we'll get a free trip to Vegas. It'll be fun. So we go to Vegas, and any minute, I'm like, I'm going to get the call. I'm just going to get the call any minute saying, don't bother, Clay's upset, you know, the whole thing. And I'm thinking, you know, fine, I have it coming. All right, so sure enough, I'm doing the red carpet, and I'm having a ball, and then I look down the red carpet, and I see Gakin. So then, <laughs> I mean Clay. So... So anyway, I turn, I go, Clay, come here, take pictures with me. So his publicist is like, he's got to go to sound check. I go, come on, Clay, don't be that way. So we're taking pictures together, and I'm smiling, and I'm hugging him and everything. And he goes, um, should I be worried about you tonight? And I go, yeah, if you're thinking. So, so anyway, you know, it's a live show once again. And so I go in, and I'm just in hog heaven because it's an award show, and you know I love it. And it was really exciting. Gwen Stefani was sitting in front of me, and the Black Eyed Peas are next to me, and it was so exciting. Okay. So now I'm thinking, all right, it's getting time for me to present the award to Clay. I want to be funny, but like, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to call him gay. Like, even I'm not as much of an asshole, I'm going to be like, ladies and gentlemen, Clay Gakin. And so, because that's, you know, I'm not going to say it to his face, all right? I, I was raised right. I talk about people behind their backs. Okay. called manners. Um, so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, what can I say, right? Okay, so now it's time for me to go present him with the award. So here's the deal. When I do an event like this, honestly, it's in my contract that I won't do it unless I can have my husband met right next to me. Because honestly, I never know who's pissed off me, who's going to say what, right? So sure enough, we go backstage, and I don't mean the green room, I mean right backstage where it's only performers and presenters. It was the weirdest group. Okay, so it's me and Matt, Gakin. Celine and Renee. Oh, yes. Celine Dion. And her husband, Renee Angelil, who is in his early hundreds. He's the oldest living Canadian. Okay. So, anyway. I go up to Clay, and Clay's like, are you going to be mean to me tonight? And I go, well, I'll make you a deal. I go, I promise not to be mean if you promise not to lip sync. Well, let me tell you something. Miss Gakin threw a bitch fit like I've never seen. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to. I did not get to where I am in America without my lip sync, and I'm certainly not going to start. Easy, Mary. <laughs> so... But it's true, he doesn't lip sync, and that is something that's great about him. And I just thought it was funny, he got so pissed off. Okay, so now it's time for me to go up. So I go, I stand at my podium during the commercial break, and there's Clay standing there in the silhouette, right, with the spiky hair. Already, in the commercial break, in the dark, the Claymates are losing their shit. Just because they know, here it comes. So I'm standing there, and it comes back to me, and at first I have to read out the teleprompter, sort of the business. And by the way, did you know that Clay's record sales are huge? He sold more than Kelly, Ruben, and Fantasia combined. Oh yeah, he's got insane record sales. Okay, so I read that part about how his single sold more than any single that year and stuff. So then I said, um, and um, on a personal note, I, um, 
I saw this performer last night here at the hotel. I ran into him in the lobby, and um, we went into the bar and had a few drinks, and uh, one thing led to another, and I, I ended up in his suite all night making sweet love. Oh, he gave it to me. He turned me around. He called me mama. That's right. Oh, uh -huh, you know. In fact, I'm still sore. Ladies and gentlemen, Clay Aiken! All right, so... That's funny, right? So... So anyway, a couple months later, I'm going to Vegas. And here's the sad thing. My poor, wonderful husband always thinks that when we go to Vegas, it's just going to be the two of us, right? And he's a gigantic sports fan, gigantic sports fanatic. So he thinks that what's going to happen is we're going to go to Vegas, he's just going to eat Sparrow pizza and play, like watch sports or whatever. And he does this thing that's very bizarre. He plays this thing, fantasy football, right? Where it's, I don't get it, it's real players, but the game's a fantasy. I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> But he loves it, right? Okay. And I just want to go play my nickel slots, okay? Because I'm like a crazy nickel slot player, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm there. I'm hitting bet max. And I don't f***ing care if it's 15 cents. Bet max. My Diet Coke is half water. My eyes are all red. Bet max. So... So while that is what's supposed to happen, what invariably happens is I turn it into Gay Vegas Weekend. And what that means is one of my gays will call, and then next thing you know, I'm dragging Matt to the Share Farewell Tour. To, oh, he has seen Bette Midler, Barry Manilow, all the gay shows. Um, okay, so sure enough, I get a call from my friend Dennis, and he goes, you're not gonna believe who's in Vegas this weekend. I go, who? And he goes, Kelly and Clay. I said, let's go. Okay, so. Oh, okay, so first of all, let me just say this. It doesn't matter if you're not a Clay Aiken fan. It doesn't matter if you don't like pop music or American Idol. When Clay Aiken comes to your town, go. <laughs> go. It is a spectacle. It is the gayest thing I have ever seen. Oh, no. Organizers of the Pride Fest in San Francisco are like, we're f***ed. <laughs> It's at University of Las Vegas in the 10,000 seat arena. Sold out, sold out. People love the Gaikin. Okay, so I go and I felt very fancy. I got tickets from the label. I go in and they're like, Miss Griffin, is everything okay? And I said, yes, thank you so much. I'm sitting five seats away from Clive Davis. I feel very fancy, right? So then he says, oh, by the way, Clay and Kelly want to say hi after. And once again, I go, and Clay? <laughs> And he goes, yeah. And I was like, okay. I go, well, who's, who's performing uh, first tonight? And he goes, well, Kelly's going to go on first, and then there's an intermission, and then Clay. I go, you know what? I'll tell you what. Why don't I just go back during intermission? Because then I'm thinking, I'll say hi to Kelly, and then if Clay doesn't want to see me or if he's pissed or whatever, then I can just avoid him altogether, right? Okay, so sure enough, the show starts. Kelly does her set, and she's great. It's very simple. She just kind of stands there and sings and stuff. Okay, so now it's intermission, so I say to everybody, come on, let's go back, and then let's try not to run into Clay, but we'll say hi to Kelly, and then we'll come back and watch Clay leave. So we go back, and Kelly was wonderful, and we're taking pictures with her, and I'm saying, oh, you know, your voice is so great, and she's saying cool beans a hundred million times. And so, and she's very, very sweet, so we're taking pictures and stuff. Stuff, right? But the whole time, I'm like thinking, you know, I better get out of here. Because I'm thinking I'm really the last person Clay wants to see before he, like, performs, right? Because I don't know if he's heard me say, like, shit on Howard Stern or call him Gaken or what, right? So sure enough, I'm sure it was my big mouth. <laughs> the door flies open, and I hear, Rolly, come back here. Shit. So here comes Clay, and he's got his dog, Rolly. i got to describe the dog. <laughs> About seven pounds, pink bow. This dog was so gay. It's not even a dog, okay? It's a fog. So she comes down, and he has her stand in front of her while he freak dances her. Oh, yeah, because he loves um, Okay, so anyway, sure enough, we take our seats, we're all excited, the clay show starts. Okay, once again, when he comes to your town, 
Trust me on this one. <laughs> the lights go down. Clay enters from the back of the theater like Elvis. Or Felvis. <laughs> and he comes in. He's dressed all in white. All the backup singers are dressed all in white. It's this big production. They come into that Mr. Mr. song from the 80s, Kyrie Laison. Remember that song? It's a whole Christian-y bullshit up with people, crazy. I don't know what the f*** it was. So... It was so weird. And, every, and the claimmates are losing their shit. We love him. And then... <laughs> Stay out of the way, right? So anyway, then he goes, and it's just this whole like up with people, Six Flags, Magic Mountain thing, and it was just <laughs> hilarious. But I have to tell you, the PS de resistance is about two thirds through the show. Clay sings the Prince song when doves cry. <laughs> Let me walk you through it. <laughs> all right, all right. So first of all, he has one of his backup singers come down from the risers. And it's kind of smart because she looked about 45, kind of chunky, kind of like a claymate. So she comes down and he has her stand in front of her while he freak dances her. Oh yeah, because he loves me. Um, except it smells like fish. So. Um, kidding it was like the way he sang it was so gay he was like maybe you're just like my mother too bold so <laughs> I am in hog heaven right so me and the guys were literally high-fiving we're like this show delivered like dominoes <laughs> Woo! Woo! like that I turn and look at Matt Matt's playing football on his cell phone like this <laughs> So, I couldn't believe it, right? I mean, this was a riot. So sure enough, he finishes when doves cry, and then he says, 10,000 seats, right, all filled? He says this, you know, the comedian Kathy Griffin is here tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know how you get that pre-diarrhea feeling in your stomach? My pants. I'm not saying that. But I am saying I knew I only had about 90 seconds to play with. And I swear to God, without missing a beat, Matt goes like this, we gotta go. And we start looking for the exits, because those claymates will tear me limb from limb. Because let me tell you something, the audience reaction was very mixed. It wasn't like, oh, what a treat. It's like, oh, she thinks he's gay. Oh, how it's certain show. I couldn't believe it. So I'm sort of frozen in time. And he says, the comedian Kathy Griffin is here tonight. And we start looking for the exits. And then he goes, and I'll bet I just gave her material for another year. And he did. Thank you, you guys have been great. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. why I decided to call the special Kathy Griffin is not Nicole Kidman. Um, number one, it's obvious I'm not. But number two, <laughs> I am just obsessed with like skinny actresses and how I could just never be that no matter what. And I just feel like, you know, Nicole Kidman and all those girls are on the cover of all the magazines and I will never be that. I never could. And I thought, yeah, you, Nicole Kidman is not even a person. She's a hanger with a head, <laughs> right? Like, that's why clothes look good on her because clothes look good on hangers and she's a hanger with a head. 